Okay. So now I'm going to see if I can still remember how to do the screen. Can you see the screen? Okay. And if you have any issues, put it down there where it says chat. Okay. Deep breath. <laughs> we are gathered this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as free and forgiven children of God. Amen. And here comes our first hymn. Oh. Can you hear it? Hang on. I think I forgot to. I apologize, I forgot to click it for share sound. Why doesn't every home in the U.S. have solar panels? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, 
grand imagination and resistance, where distrust twists our thinking, grand healing and illumination, where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I will now unmute Anne. Okay, Anne, can you unmute yourself and present the readings, please? Good morning. The first reading for Sunday, January the 9th, is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. It can be found in the Old Testament. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, the word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to, God. to God. Let me share the screen of the song. Go ahead, Anne. The psalm for Sunday, January the 9th is Psalm 29, and we will read it. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe, ascribe to, to the Lord, Lord the glory, the glory to God's of his name. Strength. Worship, Worship the, Lord the Lord in the beauty in holy of holy splendor. Heaven. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The, the voice, voice of, the, of Lord the Lord is a is powerful, powerful voice. The, the voice, voice of the, the Lord, Lord is, is a of voice majesty. of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes the Lord Lebanon makes Lebanon skip like a skip calf, like the calf, and, and Mount Hermon like, like a young, young wild ox. ox. <laughs> the voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice, the voice of, the of the Lord shakes, shakes the, wilderness. the wilderness. The Lord, the Lord shakes the wilderness, the wilderness of, of Kaddish. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl. The strips the forest bear, and in his temple all say, Gloria. The, the Lord, Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The, flood. the, the Lord, Lord sits, sits enthroned as, as king, king forever. forevermore. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Okay, go ahead, Anne. The second reading for Sunday, January the 9th is from Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them, they had only been baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, 
The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the thrashing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes there are verses from Scripture that I have known a long time, but that suddenly gain new meaning when they get connected with a certain event or story. That's what happened to me in regard to our reading from the prophet Isaiah this morning. The word of God as proclaimed by the prophet are amazing, filled with divine comfort and affirmation. Do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you walk through the water, they shall, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Ah, beautiful words. These words gained a deeper meaning for me when I heard them being said in the movie Dead Man Walking. The movie is based on a book by the same title written by Sister Helen Prejean, a nun who accompanied prisoners on death row. The movie shows her ministry to a man and as well to his family and his victims' families. The title Dead Man Walking is taken directly from prison life. When a death row inmate is taken out of his cell to be walked to the execution chamber, a guard shouts loudly for everyone to hear, Dead Man Walking. It's a warning to get out of the way as the group of guards walks the prisoner down the hallways. That scene in the movie is hard to watch. The prisoner is scared. There's no family present. He is surrounded by officers doing their job. He is announced to everyone as a dead man walking. Not a person, not an individual, not anyone's beloved, just a dead man walking. But Sister Helen is there. She reaches across the guards and puts her hand on his shoulder and recites these words from Isaiah. I am the Lord who made you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you walk through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and my flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel your savior, when to everyone else he is just the condemned man about to die. God's word comes to him and says to him, I see you, I care about you, I am with you. You are not walking this terrible walk alone. Among the fear and the anonymity of that final walk, God says to him, I know your name, you are mine. That scene deeply touched me. To this day, every time I read these verses, I have to think of that movie scene. We are reading it, this text in the second COVID winter in a row, when we're all exhausted and frustrated, overwhelmed with this new wave of infections and anxious about the future. And we are reading it paired with the story of Jesus' baptism. Let's explore that a bit. Jesus' baptism is one of the stories that is reported in all four Gospels. As is often the case in these 
situations, each gospel writer tells the story in his own way with his own emphasis. We've, what I find interesting in the version before us this morning is that Luke doesn't actually tell us Jesus' baptism. Luke tells us about John the Baptist and his ministry, and then comes verse 21. Now, when all the people had been baptized and Jesus had also been baptized, and I want to go like, what? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Luke mentions Jesus' baptism as a side clause, almost like an afterthought. All the people got baptized. Oh, yeah, and Jesus too. And on we go. Curious, isn't it? It makes me wonder just how many people there that day noticed that something special was happening. How many of them saw Jesus and recognized him as the Messiah John had been announcing? How many of them saw the spirit descending like a dove and heard God's voice from heaven? One gets the feeling that Jesus was just part of the crowd, just mixed in with other people. Last week, we heard from the gospel according to John that God's word became human in Jesus Christ. Here we get a glimpse of what this incarnation can look like. God and Jesus became human to such a degree that most people, that he could be in a crowd of other humans and they didn't have a clue that God was among them. God is acting talking, affirming, consecrating Jesus, and most people don't see or recognize it. God's love incarnate blends in so well that most people are oblivious to it. Many people back then were anxious, struggling with daily life, concerned about the political situation, burdened by many worries. There's a reason they came out to hear John preach. They are hungry hungry for guidance and for comfort and for hope. I am sure that they all would have loved a great big baptism of Jesus, an event that made an impact, a splash, if you will, a loud and glorious happening that left no doubt about the fact that God was active right there in front of their eyes. But that's not what they get. They get Jesus quietly mingling with the crowds and being baptized as one of many. We today, exhausted and anxious from COVID, concerned about the political situation, burdened by many worries, we too would love a big splashy demonstrations of God's being active and present among us. But that's not what we get. Instead, we get Jesus quietly entering our lives and touching us with grace. The order in which Luke lists the event of that day of Jesus' baptism is interesting. He writes, when Jesus had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. According to Luke, Jesus had been baptized and now he is praying. And as he is praying, the heavens open and the Holy Spirit comes upon him and God pronounces him as God's beloved son. It is during prayer that the divine inspiration and affirmation take place. This is interesting. This is comforting. I have often heard people say they wish that they remembered their own baptism. Most of us were baptized as little children, and so we have no memories of the event. We imagine it must have been special and momentous and that it would have been a blessing to remember it. And in that, it's just like Jesus' baptism. Luke doesn't remember it. The people there that day don't remember it. The baptism event was God quietly entering Jesus' life through water and the spirit. It is during prayer that the gifts of baptism come fully alive for him. Same with us. When we were baptized, God quietly adopted us as God's children through water and word. It is during prayer that we discover that the heavens are open for us. It is during prayer that we experience the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is during prayer that God blesses us with affirmation and encouragement. It is in prayer that God calls us beloved. In baptism, God quietly slipped into our lives and promises to never, ever leave us. 
when we meet with God in prayer, God's Holy Spirit helps us see where God is quietly at work to help us, comfort us, strengthen us, support us, bless us. We need that quiet presence of God because life is hard. I find it revealing that the words in Isaiah say, when you pass through the waters, when you walk through fire, not if, but when, that life can be hard is a given, that life will contain times when we feel like we're drowning is a given, that life can feel as if a blaze is turning everything we have taken for granted into soot and ashes is a given. God promises to be there with us when those times hit. We will not endure calamities alone, but accompanied by our good shepherd. In our prayer conversations with our Savior, God will affirm and encourage, comfort and strengthen, challenge and guide, inspire and bless us. When the prisoner is led to the execution chamber, coldly referred to as a dead man walking, God's voice comes to him through Sister Helen, who is the only one touching him with care and who proclaims to him, do not fear. I have made you. I have called you by name. You are mine. I will walk this walk with you. God word, God's word comes to us and reaches us when we are drowning, when we are at the end of a rope, when we are exhausted from having to make one more pivot. God touches us with his love. God proclaims to us, do not fear. I have called you by name. You are mine. I will be with you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In these challenging days, may the voice of God reach you, affirm you, and uplift you. Amen. Always have to wait for that top bar to go away so I can see my piles. Come on, move. We were baptized in Christ Jesus. We were baptized in his death. That as Christ was raised victorious, we might live a brand new life. And if we have been united in a dreadful death like his, we will all be reunited for ye. And the witness in the breaking of the bread, in the waiting arms of Jesus, who is risen from the dead. God has made a new beginning from the ashes of
<laughs> Together, let us respond to the good news we have heard by confessing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By the Holy Spirit, you gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service, that all people might know you are precious in God's sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You reveal your love and your power through water and the spirit. Protect the land from drought and flood. Teach us to guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution, and to secure access to clean water for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Establish among the nations the blessings of peace. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates and government officials who risk reputation or retaliation for the sake of mercy and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You protect us through the fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that you are with us through illness or despair, anxiety or pain confusion or weakness. Comfort all who are in need, especially Adele Warnke and her family, Dan Diana Bracken. Are there others for whom we should pray? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and justice seeking. This week, especially, we lift up your followers, Dennis and Linda Hunt, Amber Jacobson, Brian, Cindy, Natalie, William, and Charlotte Johnson, Jackie Jones, Jan and Wolfie Kahan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You desire health and well-being for your people. The world has been struggling with the COVID pandemic for almost two years now. We are exhausted. Grant wisdom to all researchers, strength and compassion to medical personnel and caretakers, creativity to teachers and business owners, courage to government agencies, and give us all the will to do our part to restore us all to normalcy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You created each of your saints for your glory. We give thanks for those you have called by name into your eternal embrace. Comfort us in times of grief and release us from fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Peace be with you all. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.
through our offering, our work continues. And I have to say, thank you. Thank you, all you wonderful, faithful people who continue to support Calvary's ministry with your giving. Just this week, we received another thank you note from the community of St. Dismas. Um, interesting, because it connects with our sermon today. St. Dismas is the Lutheran congregation in the Maryland state prison system. And we have supported them throughout COVID by giving them materials that they can send out to the inmates that they are ministering to. Thank you for making that happen. Let us commit all that we give to God's glory um, with this word of prayer. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms wide open. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with the same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord of God, of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. For this part, I want to see you. <laughs> we give thanks and praise to you, O God, for you rule over the mighty waters. You baptize us into your life. When your voice first thundered over the seas, your brooding spirit brought forth the earth from chaos and you breathed life into all creatures. You called your people to follow your ways and you sent your servant, John the baptizer to proclaim a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He pointed to your beloved child, Jesus the Christ, who came among us, strengthening us and blessing us with your peace. When he was baptized into the fearful waters of death, you raised him to life and tore open the heavens so that all might be baptized with the Holy Spirit and enter into your presence, confident at being declared the children of God who please you. Therefore, we remember with thanksgiving that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to all disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your mercy and teach us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you have elements at your disposal, I invite you to take them now. Let's wait for Ellen. <laughs> yes, she is coming back. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen.
Take your wine or juice if you have it. Beloved of God, this is the blood of Christ and it is shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, in your holy meal, we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Hear this benediction. May God give you grace to never lose hope. Grace to risk something big for something good. And grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you this day and always. Amen. We're now singing our last hymn, and I found this really sweet rendering of it. I hope you like it as much as I do. I'm having no. peace. Remember to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Thanks be to God. Now I'm going to unmute us all, and if you want to hang around and chat a little bit and touch base with one another, we can do that. Or it's okay. I am here to go. Ask God to unmute. Okay, now if you want to unmute yourself, you can do so and say hello. <laughs> Um, do you want to stop the recording? Ah, uh, that is a good idea. Good idea, Linda. <laughs>